Hi, Macy. Oh, you sound like a robot. Say something. I will, we'll call Macy now, right back. Now she's like a Van Quillicious, or whatever you call it. <laughs> a what? <laughs> the mouth is not moving. <laughs> no, when the mouth doesn't oh, move. Oh, Van Qu- a Quillicious, what a, what yes. <laughs> no, you're right. It's a Van Quillicious. You're a fuck. You're a fuck. What, you, what is the word? I want that. Is Van that Qu- That's much better. Let's see. Is it better? Is it better? Oh, yes, it's a lot better. All counts, Jimmy, yes. let, let that just go. Um, Let that go when you when the, when Matt the pointed person. out that you were like a vanquilishist uh, because we couldn't see your lips. What is so the word when was, the, 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 the puppet when they're making the mouth move? A ventriloquist. Yeah, that's exactly said, what I said. You did, yes, you did. You just yeah. moved a couple Let, of letters let's, around. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> Macy, just, we're so happy to talk to you. Yes, you're fighting Roxanne Modafferi. I'm not saying a straight up jujitsu girl. That's her strongest suit. She's been working on her striking. How did this fight come about? How did it come about? Yeah, with Um, Roxanne. Honestly, it was just like the next person in the rankings, and that's who they offered me. And I like that matchup. You know, when you were looking at like the different girls in the division, uh, Roxy was one of the girls that I was like, I would like to fight, and it made sense. Um, Obviously, she's tough, and she's you know she's a veteran in the sport. She's ranked. And uh, I think it, I think it's a perfect matchup. You know, I've heard a lot of people like, "Oh, you haven't gotten any any people to test you, any people to, you know." So it's kind of like one of those that I, this is like you cannot deny that that Roxanne has has experience, right? You can't deny that that she yeah. has um, history in the sport. So uh, it's a good fight all the way around. And how did that uh, DM she sent you? I know you've been asked about it before, but when you saw that, did you feel like there was she was just being helpful, or did you feel there was any psychology behind it? No, I mean I think that's just genuinely the kind of person she is. I mean maybe like some people could think you know oh she's just trying to be extra nice and extra happy and like make you all uncomfortable, which it didn't really bother me. the The reason why I posted it actually was because when I saw it, I was a little bit like oh that's funny because we actually did have a conversation about it um previously like a couple months back um when we were we were already supposed to fight i just saw her in vegas and uh yeah so she sent me a dm the only reason again why i posted it was like i think people can appreciate the fact that um you know the fans can see hey she's still you know she really is just a just a good person trying to do what she wants to do um and trying to help each other out me personally, I don't try to help anyone out. If I'm fighting you, I don't want to like you at all. So I'm not going to make friends with you. I'm not going to talk to you. I just want to go out there, beat you up. We can be friends afterwards. Yes. That's kind of my opinion on it. That, so when I saw yes. the DM, I didn't respond. I was like, I posted it, but I didn't respond because I felt, um, I felt like, you know, I'm an adult. I think I can figure out my own bathtub, so I'm not going to respond to that. But at the same time, it's kind of fun. Who doesn't want to read that and, and, and kind of create their own story in their mind of what could happen or why why that went on. So it's kind of fun for everyone to kind of pick at. Did it make it harder for you? Like you said, you like to dislike somebody. Did that make it harder for you or no? No. No. No, I'll still go out there and beat her up. It's good to have that edge. I, you're in yeah. the right sport for it. You know what I mean? I, I mean, mean I, it's not the friend's uh, business. Like if you want to make friends, you're in the wrong sport. I love that, Jimmy. Yeah. And let me tell you, as far as not being tested, if people are saying that, uh, Jillian Robinson, hey, man, she had some good fights. And I'll tell you right now, I was expecting I was expecting a good fight. You know what I mean? You went out there and did work, Jimmy. Yep. Jimmy did work. Threw some beautiful elbows up against the cage. Oh. Tell, look, you. you should be happy. Be smile. You should be happy. It was awesome. Congrats on that. I don't think we spoke Thank since. You. I work. I work for that. I mean, so I mean, oh, really quick. Maybe we should. They uh, they probably would. The powers that be pro- might not be happy that we mentioned this, but I'm gonna mention of it. Of course, we were gonna have uh, <laughs> Paige Vincent on here, right? But they go, oh, look. These guys over here. It's not their fault. They got a memo. Just do me a favor. She's gonna come on. Just do me a favor. She doesn't want to talk about Macy Barber. You don't ask her about Macy Barber. So I go, look, guys. That's not the first time I've heard that. I heard that on a on an aerial show too. You know, everybody's like, oh, she doesn't want to talk about Macy. So it doesn't matter. But why is that? Like, you know, I don't understand what it is. What is it about you that's got her not wanting to interact in any way? 
I think the more drama that builds behind us, the more pressure she has to fight me and the more she's scared to fight me and she just doesn't want to do that. So for her to give any form of acknowledgement would make people keep asking her, keep asking her. So uh, it is smart in the sense of I don't want to talk about Macy because I don't want anybody bringing that up. You know, she just kind of wants that. That's like there's something that you want to sweep under the rug. She's trying to sweep it under the rug like it never even happened. Uh, yeah. That's kind of my perspective on that. It's very odd that, then, I mean, she put a post out. See, I have no problem if you call her out. She put a post out being like respectfully calling out everybody in the division, but I think but you, I think, unless there's some people she like left out, but... She specifically didn't add you, and I'm pretty sure she said because you were disrespectful. It was a respect thing. Now, what? What? Uh, Maybe that's listen. The person that you want to be like, no, I want to fight that one. You exactly. Know, that one, right? The one that disrespected you felt. Exactly. You, if you feel you're disrespected, that's perfect. That's your one chance to legally go and beat someone up. A hundred. She gets it. Yeah. She gets well, it. She wants the problem to is she can't do that. Do you? That's the problem. Do you think? Well, you are right, Ty. I mean, I mean, it's fourteen. Mo- Paige is fourteenth, and you're ninth. So it's not like uh, it's but, not like Paige would say, "Well, I'm coming down." And, you know, I, I don't understand why she she doesn't want to seem to mix it up. It, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot easier fights out there. You yeah, know what I mean? She's sure. got to be thinking that way. And is it because she's making so much money with these endorsements that she's thinking, "Why get busted up?" I don't know. What is she thinking? <laughs> right? I don't mean, see. Definitely. That's definitely something to take into consideration. I mean, if you've watched my last few fights, I mean, you usually come out with a cut or two. So, well, and, and you look like you have one thing on your mind, and that's effing destruction. Yeah. Dude, she means business. Yes. I see yeah. it. I see it beaming off her. How's Duke <laughs> Rufus doing? He's great. Uh, he'll be out here, I think, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, we had a great camp. You know, I have a, a good team behind me, and... A team that we're going to go after the title together, and and I think I've finally cracked the code with with the with the coaching. I am so happy, and I, I'm I'm friendly with all the camps, you know. I'm so happy you ended up with Duke, because I think Duke is he's that he's got that he's that old school like he's in your corner, like you know what I mean. And he knows his stuff. He was a fighter himself. He knows the ups and downs. He's he's philosophical. Oh my gosh. He, oh my right? gosh. Don't even get me started. Get yeah, started. Go ahead. Get started. He's got all the stories. It's great. We got to get him back it on is, the podcast. Is, yeah. Oh, that, that's great. So I'm glad, I'm glad you ended up there. And how far now, how long do you have to, to wait before? You want to be the youngest champion in UFC history. And Jones was uh, 23 and eight months. So, and you're 21. How close are you to being 22? Uh, I'll be 22 on the 18th of May. So hold on, I have it. Oh, you have you actually have a chart. I'm gonna guess two years. Uh, I love it. I was, I was having a conversation with Ben Askren yes the other day, and he asked me the same question. So, uh, we have okay. So July. Uh, so John did it on uh, July 19th, uh, J- March 19th of 2011. Uh, so it'd be January eighteenth of twenty twenty two would be the uh, would be the date. But that before you be, be, be the be under there. 20, yeah. So that's when I would be there. Shoot. So, well, on track. Yeah. Right. Well, if yeah, if you there. if you win this fight and and uh, you know you can never look past somebody uh you know who because either they're 16 years a lot of times a veteran who has seen everybody and, and and everything figures out a way to counteract somebody younger so a lot of times a younger fighter makes a mistake and i'm not saying you'll make this mistake of looking past somebody and a lot of times a veteran knows exactly what to do against somebody who hasn't faced all the competition they have does that make sense it does um and you know i think the way that i personally combat that is again duke rufus Mark Lehman, Ben Askren. I mean, those guys are geniuses. They're they're the guys that have been in the sport for that long, you know, so they can kind of teach me and and help me learn that mindset of the the veterans and understand, you know, hey, you can't just you can't just rush in right away and and be reckless. You got to you got to be a calculated killer. So, uh, that's what they're that's what they're teaching me. So, I think I'm picking it up pretty well and I'm excited to show that. 
And if you win the fight, uh, I'm going to guess you and uh, Roxanne would switch. Not that the placement is everything or the rankings mean everything, but if you do come out 6th or 7th if you win the fight or if you have a really a, a strong win or a fast finish, uh, how many more fights do you think you need to have before you're talked about? Because people are already talking about you, so do you think you need to win one more after that before you're considered for a possible shot at the title? Yeah, uh, when I win on a okay. Saturday, um, I would like to fight, you know, one or two more times and then fight for the title by the end of the year. Oh, you're looking at doing it possibly. What do you think of uh, Caitlin against uh, Shevchenko? I'm excited to watch it. You know, I was uh, just telling everyone that I will uh, actually be there at that fight. Um, I'm planning on going out and watching that live. Uh, so I'm excited to see how they... Uh, how they have their fight, and um, I don't. I don't think Caitlyn has the the ability to finish um, Valentina, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's an interesting fight, um, and then and then we'll see where you wind up by then. When is that fight? Do you know? Uh, it's February eighth. Oh, okay. So. So exciting! Yeah, it really is. Well, good luck. I mean, uh, you're really, uh, you're really an exciting fighter, and it's fun to, uh, it's fun to watch all these people reacting to you. And uh, you know, it, it's almost like if, if Paige had just come on, and she didn't come on that day. That's why we're a little irritated, and didn't, didn't tell us why she didn't come on. But I just would have come on and said, yeah, it, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But it's the avoidance to to hope it goes away that's actually helping build momentum for it. The fact that because you're still talking, you're still saying, hey, I want to fight her. So there's, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I'll never turn down an easy fight. Who turns down an easy paycheck? Exactly. But at the same time, I'm going to continue to progress my career. So it's like whether she ever fights me or not, it doesn't really. I mean, sure, it'll be a it'll be a good payday, but uh, like I'm going to continue to move up through the rankings and and go after my own my own goals uh, within the sport, whether she's there or not. Well, and I always say this to fighters uh, who have this uh, the last fight on the prelims. But that does say something about they want to, they want people to stick around and watch the rest of the fights. So the the prelims, the final fight in the prelims, is always a fight that the U, uh, the UFC really believes in. So good luck. Uh, obviously, you against Montefiore is a, is a great fight uh, this Saturday night. Thanks, Macy. Thank you so much.